first of all, um, whether you know it or not, I have been teaching you all year using the rule of four, which is a big idea of math, and that is you should understand math on four levels. Analytically, graphically, numerically, and verbally. Now, I will give you examples of this. If I say analytically, then that means here, what's this equal to? That's analytically, it's basically symbol for graph. Uh, now graphically then would be if I said, hey, what's the, what is F prime at two? Well then you would say, well I know that means the slope of the curve at two, that's graphically. Or uh, area below and above the curve, graphically, and so on. Okay? Numerically is when you're talking tables. Um, if I gave you some points, then what uh, might that change between the two points, average rate of change? Or could you give me a, a trapezoid or a rectangle estimate based on this table? Or um, could you use your calculator and make a table to investigate a limit? Those are the kind of ideas. And then verbally is to say, can you make the verbal connections between calculus and plain old English? For example, if I said the rate of change of a function is blah blah blah, then does that tell you derivative or integral? Rate of change is derivative. Okay, if I say amount of change, well that's integral. Uh, you need to obviously make that connection. If I said, you know, uh, the tree is growing at a rate of three meters per second, you don't need to understand that calculus. Uh, on for whatever crazy reason, it just boggles my mind. On the AP test, if you were to leave this on a free response, you would get full credit. If you were to leave this on a free response, you would not get full credit. You may not be this function to simplify at reference angles. You must actually find them. Okay? So if you go to leave your work, to me that's just stupid math. If you can't add three and two, then just walk out now. Okay? Uh, but to me, uh, it is what it is. You should be able to do both. You should therefore be able to do this, all these reference triangles uh, in pretty quick short order. I don't know if we need to do those for note purposes. I will put those on my key uh, line, but I don't think class time that's necessary. You with me? Uh, make sure you also put the quadrants in here. So for example, where is sine positive or negative? Positive in the first and Second, because sine is opposite, opposite is y, y is positive a, and it's a negative. That's what I was saying in those directions when I said where is sine or cosine positive and negative. That, with the reference angles, you're good to go. Okay? All right. A limit. A limit. What is a limit? Is a limit the at or the approach? It's the approach. A limit is what the y values are approaching. Not necessarily the app. Okay? Now, if it's continuous, then the approach and the app are the same, but not everything is continuous. So, for example, if I said, hey, what is the limit as x goes to 1? This is a classic, do you have a basic rule of calculus kind of thing. If I said, what's the limit as x goes to 1, do you say 1 or 2? 1. Okay, is the function continuous? No. All right. A limit E and E. There are three cases where a limit does not exist. What's one reason a limit doesn't exist? A whole. There's a, any kind of discontinuity. Let's go with, uh, you think of discontinuity. So let's go with, um, first of all, the left-hand limit not equal to the right-hand limit. If the left-hand approach and the right-hand approach are different, then the limit does not exist. Another case is if there is a hole's not a problem because that right there is a hole and the limit exists just fine, so don't think hole. What else? 
touch is derivative idea, so that's not it. Okay, so think oscillation. For example, if I said, what's the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x? What, do, what y value does sine approach as x goes to infinity? It, it does not approach a single value. It approaches many values. So one is oscillation. Left hand, right hand are the same, are different. Or if there is a zero in the denominator slash a vertical asymptote. Okay? All right. Always try direct substitution first. Uh, you need to distinguish between the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, and the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared minus 4 and x minus 2. In both cases, you would direct substitute and say, what happens when I put 2 in or 3 in? Now, when you put 2 in the first one, do you agree you get a problem? And so then you say, all right, I'll have to deal with that problem. We will, we'll talk about that in a minute. But in the first one, would I factor that and cancel that? Or is that necessary? Can I just put 3 in? Okay, so your first goal is to say, can I just say what happens when I put the number in? All right? Now, I'm dealing with infinity slash problem areas. If the limit is 1 over 0, then graphically that means there is a vertical asymptote. And you would say then that the limit either does not exist or it could be infinity or negative infinity. On the multiple choice, they would never put both, okay? So for example, if I said the limit as x goes to 0 of uh, 1 over x squared, what are the two possible true answers? There are two. What are they? Does not exist. One is does not exist because when you put 0 in, it's undefined. 1 over 0 does not exist. What's next? Infinity. Okay. So it would either be D and E, and there would be no infinity in the cases, or in the choices, or it would be infinity, and D and E would not be there. It would never be both. You with me? Okay? All right. Um, what about then when we get 0 over 0? Now, that could actually be three different things that go through my mind. What's one thing that might go through your mind? It's a whole graphically. That's true. How are you going to find the limit? In one way, you can deal with zero over zero. One out of three. L'Hopital. Okay, thank you. What is L'Hopital's rule? Uh, that works every time. Now, the problem, though, is what if I said the limit as x goes to zero of x to the 98 plus x to the 96 over x to the 96 plus uh, 2x to the 98. Okay, are you going to multiply that 98 times? That would be really ridiculous. Instead, the idea is can you factor and cancel? Okay, so another possibility is all right, yeah, you could do L'Hopital, but could it be a factor and cancel? Look at this guy. I mean, isn't this 0 over 0? Yeah, and could I do L'Hopital here? Yeah, it wouldn't be too bad. But couldn't you just as easily do factor out an x minus 2, drop the x minus 2, then put in 2 and get 4? Okay, so I think another possibility is factor and cancel. That's this or this. Okay? The last possibility is that maybe you're looking at the definition of the derivative. If, for example, I said, what's the limit as x goes to 2 of log of x minus log of 2 over x minus 2, 
Yeah, that's zero over zero. And yeah, L'Hopital would work. But it is also the alternate definition of the derivative of log of x at 2. And so if you saw that, then you'd say, oh, that's the derivative of log, which is 1 over x at 2, which is 1 half. I'm going to do this. All right. Now we will review the definitions of the derivative tomorrow, but every derivative, every definition of the derivative problem amounts to 0 over 0 because every one of them, the concept is change between two points, delta y over delta x, taken down to tiny change, approaching zero change of dy over dx. The whole idea is going to zero over going to zero. So a definition of the derivative, every one is always zero over zero, if you can think of that. Okay, what we tell you what we just talked about, it's for zero over zero, or infinity over infinity, plus or minus, no other cases. So for example, here, could you bump down L'Hopital and 1 over x squared? No. Get your phone away. Okay? So if you did, then you would obviously get a disaster. You would get a wrong answer, and it would lead to wrong, wrong, wrong. All right. Last but not least, one of the harder ones. Uh, I'm talking now. So whether you know it or not, so, I mean, it has some stuff that everybody should be able to do. Best student, worst student, average student, everybody. Okay? All that is everybody should be able to do. Points and asymptotes, these tend to be harder questions. They have low averages. But the idea is, if you think graphically, something approaches a horizontal asymptote if the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity approaches some constant. Okay? If you look at what happens on the end behavior, if the function or y starts to approach just 2, then that means it's approaching some kind of this horizontalish behavior. <coughs> All right. So you might even do a basic compare and contrast between asymptotes. If the limit as x goes to infinity of a function is a constant, then that is a horizontal asymptote. But if you switch the if the limit as x goes to a constant is infinity, so x is going to a constant, y is going to infinity, then that's a vertical asymptote. But they're both, as x or y goes, one goes to a constant, the other goes to infinity. Right? Okay, time to ask questions. 48 to touch. All right, continuity. What's the definition of continuity? The limit as x goes to a constant from the left of some function. Never write a limit statement with nothing in it. There's no more sure signs with some reader at this point. There's no calculus than somebody seeing a limit statement with nothing in it. If you ever write the limit of x goes to 2 of nothing equals the limit as x goes to 2. That, that you might as well just write, I don't know any calculus on your paper because it's the same. Okay? The limit with no argument surely means you don't know what you're doing. Or you have no attention to detail whatsoever. Okay? Keep in mind, you are giving your best work here. Not your get it done homework, I got a million things to do work. Your best work. Uh, types of discontinuity, what are they? Jump. Now the jump is, it's discontinuous because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. What's another? Hole. Hole. What's the problem via the, in terms of the definition? Where does the hole fail the definition? Yeah, F at C is not equal to one of the limits. Okay? And what's the third? Uh, sharp turn, that's still true. Infinite. Infinite is a vertical asymptote. Kind of thing. Okay? All right.
Uh, in that case, the limit doesn't exist, so it's hard for the limit not to exist and equal a point. That's kind of failing the definition. Uh, intermediate value theorem, a typical conclusion reads something like, because, what's the condition for intermediate value theorem? Continuous and differentiable, or just continuous? Just continuous, because f is continuous, and then there's some kind of between this component. For example, uh, velocity equals zero is between this point where the velocity is negative and this point where the velocity is five, mm -hmm. something like that. Then there must be a place where f equals whatever they ask for. Okay? Well, it's easy for people to get IDT or MDT confused. If you see, must there be a place where F equals, does that scream IDT or MDT? That's IDT. If it says, must there be a place where F prime equals, well, then I go in MDT direction, right? You with me? Extreme value theorem, this is also one of those harder ones. This is one of the existence theorems. Part one of the extreme value theorem is that <coughs> if a function if a function is continuous on a closed interval, it must have an absolute maximum. The English part of it makes fine sense to students. The symbol part is what keeps you from succeeding. It would read something like this. Um, there is, there exists an F greater than or equal to, uh, let's see, an F at some point greater than or equal to all Y values on the interval. That doesn't say what is the absolute extreme and it's kind of hidden within. There's some y value greater than or equal to all other y values on the interval. Some specific y value greater than all y values. Okay. Okay. And last but not least, average rate of change, especially as we lead into tomorrow, which is just the change rate of change in derivatives. Average rate of change is change between two points or over an interval. Think delta y over delta x, or y2 minus y1. That's slope between two points, all the way back from algebra 1. Um, that's secant slope. If I said, hey, what's the average rate of change? I think I have a problem like this in the practice. If I said, what's the average rate of change between those two points, then you would just find the y's using the equation and then just take the y's over the line. You with me? I think that's the end of the notes, is it? Okay, cool. Do you have any homework for me? Oh, good. Okay, that's all. This is your time. This is news. Um, so I actually, I don't want to, uh, I don't want, I don't know. So here's the deal. I usually collect these all the way up to the day of the, the practice exam, practice exam. So that would be by next Friday. But the problem is, so some of you are awesome students and you'll do them every night anyway. But the problem is I then have some knuckleheads who say, oh, they're going to do it until Friday. So then they do all eight reviews on Thursday night. Doesn't really do them any good. Uh, so if I say I'll take them next Friday at the latest, will you do them in a normal fashion, like a real adult? Or no, I need to check them the next day. Right. <laughs> Hold you accountable. Uh, what do you say? Collect them every day, or maybe at the end of every week. Yeah. Okay, so let's say one through four will be due one through. No, I didn't write it. One through four do Friday, and then five through eight are due next Friday. Okay, that'll hold you a little. All right.
Let me know how I can help you. Um, I understand seventh grade is fun time. Do you guys have fun stuff seventh grade or no? It's normal. There you go. There's no fun stuff? Okay, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll help you seventh hour. I'll help you before school. I'll help you after school. I don't care. Just I will match your effort and then some. So you just tell me how I can help you and I'll do it. All right? Yes. Yes. I don't know what to make of it. I think we can all agree, though, that Penny Patch is for this, right? Yeah. I should get a Penny Patch, though. So I taught at the board, I used to have my workers right there. Yes. Yeah. Please do that, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if I can help you. Uh, I, I think I can see here. Yeah, I don't know. I will. What kind of repercussions are we talking about? Require you to come to the next day? Are you take out to the top to the summit to the school community if you don't? Let's just not, not deal with it. Let's just do it. Let's do it. Oh, yes. So, first of all, the Dr. Brown is actually going to do it. Oh, yeah. Can I also suggest that anyone you miss, I'll have the key online. Anyone you miss, I would put red notes to yourself. Hey, this is what you did wrong. Because then before the AP test or before the practice test, you can look for the red and say, oh, yeah, I did that one. So corrections in some kind of color will help you study later. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, so I'm looking at this, and I do like this. Okay. All right, actually. Thank you, Okay. And no, it exists. Uh, oh, it does. No, actually, it doesn't exist, but it's not because zero is zero. I was able to do this numerically. No. Do a test, do a numerical thing. If you put numbers in, for example, if you went close to one, obviously, is a problem. But if you think just above or just the two, that would be one over negative one, which is negative one. If you did 1.5, I'm trying to get closer to one. So that's 0.5 over six. So that's what I would say. That would be negative 0.5, so that's negative one. So it looks like above or below or above one, it's turning out to be the same number but negative because one plus one. I would then try above one or below one. You don't hold zero. <laughs> An absolute value over one. So that's one. No, oh, that's negative. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's one. And I think this one, this side is always one. So in essence, the number is always the same. It's giving you ones or negative ones, but the absolute value causes yeah, some to be here. So on one side is. Yeah, so that's right. So I want to make sure that it, it's not because of this that it doesn't exist. That didn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's because the one that fell right in on it in that Good morning, gentlemen.